Ms Conway Walsh. Everybody, a happy International Women's Day across the House, uh, all of the members and the staff and the former members. Uh, but on this International Women's Day, I know we all share in common um, the solidarity that we want to send to the hundreds of thousands of women and girls who are fleeing from Ukraine uh, and many of those who have stayed behind and are actively involved in resisting uh, the Russian invasion. I want to offer my unwavering solidarity at this deeply distressing time. Um, and I know that we all recognise the importance of sovereignty and the right to self-determination. And I hope that the compassion that is rightly shown across the EU for Ukraine is shown to the women throughout the world. I think it's something like 62 million uh, people who are fleeing conflict uh, right as, as we speak. Uh, women who have been displaced as well. I want to come back to our own, uh, our own country in terms of the women. Women in this country have a right to live without fear, but unfortunately there are many women tonight who will go to bed afraid, afraid that they won't wake up in the morning and afraid of what's going to happen to them and their children overnight. And some of it is just as simple as them not having anywhere to go them not having an alternative housing arrangement. And the number of women that say to me, even in recent weeks, uh, I really want to go, I know I really need to go, I know I'm in a dangerous place, but I don't want to be homeless. I don't want to be homeless. And that is the dilemma that women across this country are facing as we speak. And words are fine, but as my colleague Kathleen Punchin said, we must do something about it. And we must do it as a matter of urgency. I want to remember the carers today, and we rightly thank the carers, we say thank you. But when it came to, to the opportunity to give them the COVID bonus, again, we turned our backs on family carers, and that is not good enough. So too often we pay lip service, but we don't, uh, we don't follow that up. We know that family carers um, save us about two, two, uh, 20 billion every year. Um, on for the work that they do by giving their time to care for a loved one. They keep hospital beds free for others and they reduce the need for state funded care facilities. They have really suffered during COVID. They haven't had any respite and yet we turn our backs and we say that you can't have a COVID payment. We really all need to question ourselves in terms of the decisions that are made around the distribution of our wealth in this country. We are one of the wealthiest countries in the world. We need to show it and we need to share it.